Look at these beautiful floating stairs. We were called into this job site to create floating stairs that came from the front porch down to grade. See that concrete footer down there? That ended up way lower than they initially estimated it would because it was all loose fill in this area and they had to dig down until they had something solid to pour on top of. Here's what we're going for. This is a 3D computer drawing that Steven made to make sure that everything was going to look right and so that we could have our layout. Once you have your layout, you can build just about anything. Here we are cutting some 6x6 mechanical tube. These are going to be the posts that support our concrete treads for our floating steps. That 6x6 has a quarter inch steel wall, and that's a good thing. It needs to support a lot of weight. Once our posts were cut to length, we're cutting now cutting out our base plates. Our base plates are going to weld to the bottom of the post and then we they're going to have four holes in them and we're going to take three quarter inch wedge anchors and drive them down into the footer and tighten them up. These base plates are going to keep those stairs from going anywhere. Once all the base plates are cut out, we start welding them onto the post. We've cleaned up the edge to make for a clean weld and then we have offset these quarter inch lower than the post. That creates a little bit of a reveal on the bottom side and you can weld in there real nicely without having to grind most of that weld off. The process I'm using to do this weld is called MIG welding. Now you can see this first bottom plate that we are welding, the post is not centered on it. And that's because that concrete footer was poured wider than it was long. We're adjusting for that. Here's the next post base. As you can see, this post is centered. We have plenty of room to center it. This post base also has a slot in it. You can see it down there at the bottom. That's to allow a wire to get through there into the post, and then it goes up the post, exits through the top plate to an LED strip that they will mount under the concrete tread. Now we're cutting out a top plate. We're cutting the slot for the wire in it, but you can see the holes clear out at the corners. These top plates are big because we want them to be most of the way under the concrete treads. We want as much support up there as we can get for that concrete. We're marking out locations of where the posts go on these top plates. And then we will invert the posts that already have the base plate welded to them. So the base plate will be up in the air. We'll line up the post with the marks we just made. And then we will make sure it is square to the top plate. These magnets are great. The magnet inside them does not activate until you until you run that switch right there. So you can see you can set it down, scoot it wherever you need it, then run the switches and it locks it in. I'm just checking with the bigger speed square to make sure everything is square. And then I'll come in and I'll tap each corner. If I were to weld off one side right now, the heat would cause that post to be pulled out of plumb. And it would no longer be square to the top plate. So I tack every corner and then I pull the magnets and weld off each side. Now I am welding with a dual shield wire. It has external gas shielding and it has a flux core for inner shielding. This burns really hot. You can get really good penetration into the metal. And if you get your settings right and you know what you're doing, you can get beautiful results like this. You can see that wire chase right there it will allow the wire to exit the top of the post, run out to the edge of the top plate, and it won't be hanging down. These right here are reinforcement for the concrete treads that we welded up out of 5 8 rebar. The stack of plywood there are blockouts for the bottom of the treads where our top plates will eventually recess into the bottom of those concrete treads. Here are the tread supports. Just come back from powder coat. They have a water resistant primer underneath this color coat. This color coat is a textured black finish and it came out very nice. Now we're rolling up to the job in the service truck with the crane to install these bad boys. It was a cold day. And as you can see, there's snow on this tread. The guys actually poured the treads in the garage with the heater on to make sure that the concrete could cure before the water in it froze. But then once they were cured, they moved them outside and this one got covered in snow and so we're just uncovering it before we get moving. It's also frozen to this piece of plywood and that piece of plywood is frozen to the pallet. And uh, it's just really cold.
Because of the way the worker is parked, there wasn't a lot of room to get to this tread. We couldn't reach it with the crane because the vehicles were double parked along here. And we could have gone through the house and got everybody come out and move their vehicle. But since there were three of us and a hand truck, we decided we could probably do it. Now that's not a light tread. That weighs about 550 pounds. And we are walking on ice to make things uh, ever so much more sketchy. We don't want to break this step. If we slip and fall, we could break the step. So the stakes are high. And no, I don't just mean those driveway form stakes, which, you know, it would hurt pretty bad if you fell on one of those. That occurred to us while we were doing this. So we were extra careful to do everything we could to keep our footing. As you can see, two of us were easing onto the hand truck. One of us was holding the hand truck to make sure it didn't slide into the Chrysler town and country. Now, we didn't have a lot of room, as you can see, to use this hand truck, but we had hatched up this idea. It was almost a solid sheet of ice right there between the van and that driveway form. So we thought, well, if we get it onto the hand truck, maybe we could just shove it and slide the whole thing sideways all along that ice until we get to the back of the van where we'll have room to use the hand truck like it was intended to be used. As you can see, it is working. It's hard to get traction on the ice to shove this block because it's so much heavier than I am. But as you can see, we are getting progress. Slow and sure we'll do it. Now that Steven's joined us, we got a little more aggressive and really shoved it because we had more hands on it, more stability, and basically better insurance. There she goes. Now it's on wheels. We're taking it over to a spot where we can reach it with the crane and from the same point, be able to finally install it with the crane. You just got a look at the back of that tread or the bottom side of that tread and you probably saw that piece of plywood in there that was being used to block it out. That piece of plywood is creating a recess for our half inch plate. It's also creating a recess for the LED strip that's going up in there. We made it a little bit wider at their request so it would accommodate the LED strip. You don't want to see that LED strip or that LED light fixture hanging down underneath the step, so you might as well tuck it up inside. And I got out my framing hammer to try and hack this plywood out. And it had the appearance of being frozen. That wasn't looking very hopeful. It looked like we might have to pick each piece out and basically make toothpicks out of the whole thing like I'm doing in this corner here. But uh, we just kept at it for a while and applied a few other methods. We used a cold chisel and another hammer. And then we started getting some progress. That was encouraging. And... Uh, this still took a fair bit of time. You're not seeing all the time that we've spent trying, just trying to get this plywood out of here. But with enough patience and persistence, it finally came. The superintendent was on site. We ended up borrowing a wonder bar from him, and that really made the other two go a lot faster. Yay. Nice. I was hoping it wasn't. And now we've taken the tread support and flipped it upside down so the top plate is in its recess right where it needs to sit. As you can see, if you look closely there, right on the front side, there is a strip in the recess that is still open. That's where the LED light fixture is going. So Jesse's just match drilling all the holes. He's being really careful about depth. We don't want to get too close to the surface of this tread. I think we stayed away an inch and a half from the surface of that tread. And I'm cutting up all thread studs. This is three quarter inch all thread that we are going to epoxy into those holes that he just drilled in the bottom of the concrete tread. We need 12 of those, three steps, four studs a piece. And now we are match drilling the post bases into the footer. We've uh, snapped some chalk lines on here and got our layout, so we just have to 
bring these post bases up to the lines with chalk lines we snap. We can match, drill the holes, and then we scooch the post base out of the way and we can drill to final depth. Moving these treads by hand gives you a lot of appreciation for this crane. It's nice, but when you have to wrestle one of these by hand and then get to use the crane, it, it feels like it's even nicer. We are flying the second one in right over the wellhead, just like we wanted, and down into the hole. The electrician is making his electrical connections as we bring in the post bases. We'll tip them up on the edge for him so he can uh, make his splices and then tuck those up inside the post so they're protected from weather. And now that we have them all in position, we are using a level to get them as level as possible. That footer, of course, is not perfect on top by any means, but we brought shims with us and we are putting shims underneath the bottom plates where needed before we work down the wedge anchors. And that's it. Everything lined up just the way it should, worked out great. Take a look at that bottom plate that we had to offset for the footer. It's just sitting down there exactly where it should. All the splices are up inside the post. The jumper wire is going between them. It's a beautiful thing. Look up underneath there. That is so clean. It turned out so pretty. It almost makes you wish you could see the bottom of it just to enjoy it. But no, no, you don't want to see the bottom of that. It's just beautiful if you understand how the construction works. And here they are in real life. It worked out great. You can feel a little bit of the flex of the steel when you walk on the edges, but they're plenty strong and they don't flex too much. They came out just like we hoped they would. And now grade will be brought up to about the level of the foundation right there below the blocks, if you can see that. And that'll bring grade right up to about here, which will be another reveal, just like all the other steps here on this set of stairs. Should look pretty awesome. We didn't know at this point the grade was actually going to be lower than that. I don't think they did either, but they ended up adding another step later. And you can see this concrete footer here that they have poured to accept the fourth tread. They are going to bolt the top plate to it and epoxy it as well, I believe, and then uh, bolt that last tread onto the top plate I just dropped off. This was a very fun project. You can come in and do something cool. I think this goes with the house very well. It looks awesome. It feels awesome. It was really fun to build. That's one of the neat things about being a job shop is you never know what you're going to be doing next for sure. Might be building something, working on something. If you enjoy this kind of thing, make sure that you're subscribed and click the bell so you get notified when the new videos come out. And we'll look forward to bringing you on to a future job.